having us. Guys, welcome back to another two-game series between Seoul and Euphermal this time around. We start to the top left, our blue Terran player from Rind and Rain. We have Seoul. He's going up against the red Terran player from Team Liquid to the bottom right corner. It's Euphermal. Alright, so first game of the series. Getting this set up and ready to go. Good luck, have fun being called. And again, first time we see Kairos Junction today. We'll see Extraction after this as well for map number two. Another map we didn't see today, but these are both very fun maps. Yesterday's games on these maps were very good. And again, just to re reiterate, today we're going to get to see every single map, because I know what the maps are for the remaining series after this as well. We'll see every map apart from R Ritual Moopy Temple today. So Ritual Moopy Temple one we'll maybe hopefully see again tomorrow. Coming back into action. For now, though, it is all about this TVT on Kairos Junction. So let's take you through this standard map entry to the tournament. To the bottom right-hand side is a main base, which leads out into a natural expansion, both fairly reasonable, again, droppable into the natural main base, pretty droppable as well. Harassment over here, definitely available. Moving out of the natural, if you choice of moving up towards a base or down towards a base, and then across towards a fourth base, I would say it's more natural to kind of go down rather than uh, upwards. Just going upwards in general leaves these bases very... They're just very far, they're kind of far out there. You come down third base, fourth base, you think about the bottom of the map, and then maybe later in the game you start taking top right. But you can also just continue moving bottom left. In general, the expansion patterns will be interesting to see how they develop here on uh, Kairos Junction. And we do see the command center dropping down, so it's a Reaper expand to start off from Seoul. Euphermal opens with the double gas, though, which means he's going to be a bit more aggressive. This factory already coming into play in the main base, and about halfway done at the moment. So, as a Reaper pops out and starts to head across towards the upper left side, we will be seeing Euphermal looking to get aggressive, looking to just try and clean out, and just checking at the moment for a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of proxy locations, making sure he's not going to be caught off guard by anything here. Doesn't want to run himself in towards a position where suddenly, boom, two Reapers in his main, and he's in a lot of trouble having to pull his own Reaper back, maybe out of position, and all the rest of it. I do see a command center coming up here on the natural. Love the suggestion in the chat. Has anyone tried proxy racks on a turret protected spot yet? I don't actually think it's possible because I'm pretty sure most of the spots that are protected by turrets are not really buildable nearby um, with the way the maps work. So I actually don't think it works because even on Crystalline Addiction, the one which has that topside pathway, it's not actually... You can't really build there because uh, it's not a... It's like... Uh, segregated area, so it's like a s it's a bunch of small pathways rather than one large pathway. So only like marines and smaller units fit for it. Got some cheers in the chat for you, Thermal. I asked no one trying to give you Thermal some energy here. As we do see you, Thermal getting up with the double Reaper play. Is able to not just get a Reaper but also a marine. Unfortunately, he loses a Reaper as well as he hops back down to the low ground and starts to head out back into the middle of the map. Ooh, another Reaper goes down as well. Small mistake there. Maybe those aren't the biggest of units in the world to keep alive, but they're still nice, they're annoying, and they can definitely jump back in for more damage. The main base has this little bit of a Reaper ledge over here as well, so it would have been possible to jump in and maybe go get some further scouting information, especially considering the main base is over here, the production is generally going to be placed here, which means this Reaper ledge is actually very good for jumping up and scouting out what happens on this main. Now, Raven starts up from Seoul. It's going to be a Cloak Banshee from Euphermal. The fact that Euphermal already uh, starts to get this Cloak Banshee out is obviously not great if there's a Raven on the way, but there's still oftentimes possibilities and ways for these ra uh, Banshees to deal damage. Sometimes there's just not enough anti-air there, so you can actually still get a good few kills. Nowadays, though, if a Raven's nearby, even if it's detected, the Banshee doesn't always get damaged in any ways because it's, uh, you can also just throw down a... Um, you can also just throw down a... Uh, an interference matrix on the Banshee. That not only uh, decloaks it permanently until the interference matrix fades, but it also stops it from being able to attack. So the Banshee suddenly is just going to sit there uselessly if the Raven is nearby. And so Sol already set up nicely to minimize potential damage to be taken on this one. And as we do have two Psych ones and a few Marines gathered up on the front of the Natural. Banshee will come around the left side and wants to move in towards the uh, Natural Mineral Line as well. So I'll take some hits, but this is exactly what we're talking about. Interference Matrix stops it from uh, attacking, and Banshee will just go down, reached there by the Cyclones. Again, the initial investment from Euphermal, not too worthwhile yet. Has a second Banshee ready to go. 
Now you do see extra fireworks coming down. I was about to say, we could maybe still be seeing mech from Euphermal looking at the setup here. Triple gas was uh, already being placed, and I was like, eh, you know, he hasn't started stim yet. It's a bit later than obviously the stim pack of Sol, which comes in from the main base right now. Starport starts a reactor now too. And this barrack's going to hop up and jump onto a reactor as well. So, Rax jumping onto a reactor also here. As you do see a few marines and cyclones from Euphermal. Just going to be joined up together, getting rid of that first marine. And just going to continue to push on forwards. That bunker already taking a little bit of damage here. One cyclone picked off. Well, okay, I mean, a little bit of back and forth at this stage. Euphermal's still going to try and press forwards apparently. He wants to get rid of these, some of these SCVs. That's a very brave movement, right? I mean, he's going to get rid of a lot of SCVs though. Seven, eight... And he just sits here forever because the Cyclone's obviously gone to deal with this uh, Banshee in the main base. So the multi-prong from Euphemia, while the Banshee didn't do damage itself, it created the opportunity for him to do damage with the Marines and the Cyclone. And now 10 SCVs have fallen. So Sol losing out on 10 workers here. As you do see this uh, bunker going to be salvaged. Explodes just like that. It's going to be seeing the siege tank here from Euphemia. is going to be uh, finishing in a moment or two. More marines and tanks gathering together. Cyclone's been repaired up here by these SCVs as well. There's going to be a bio for both players. I just don't see how Sol attacks up this ramp with a tank already in position on the ramp, especially. But I guess interference matrix, but the marines take the charge forwards. That actually stops the Raven coming into position. Raven trying to loop around. There's a second siege tank, but there's double interference matrix available. Raven is not going to be able to be put to use here. Marine stim forwards, but no medevac, so that's hurting, but there's the medevac showing up now. Sol trying to make use of an army supply lead. Infermal defending well for the moment. Still that Raven, which is extremely scary here, I would say, more so than anything else. Tanks now, Sol will set up a bit of a soft container. A couple of Marines in range, unfortunately. And he still has this, have this Raven. If he just gets the shot off onto the tanks to interference matrix this, well there we go, both tanks interference matrix, so you fellow doesn't have much, you'll see jump another tank now, has a concave of marines, one of the cyclones or two of the cyclones still fighting here, it's not quite enough, so will break through, and he will get win game number one on Kyra. So, let me, I'm going to introduce the players and take you through this map, because I really do find it very interesting, the possibilities and how things can go. To the bottom left hand side, our blue Terran player from Team Liquid is Euphermal. And he's going up against the Red Terran to the top right side of the map. From Wind and Rain, it is so. So, I, I, this is why this map is interesting. The natural not only has a lead down to a third base as you'd expect, it has rocks which can lead you down to this other base. Now this map is meant to be close by air and a long distance by ground. And it really truly is. Out of the natural, you've got to come all the way along here, up around and finally you get to your opponent's third up into the natural. Now what I find really interesting is that obviously throughout the game you take down these rocks, you open faster pathways, but you really have an option of what you do with these rocks as well. And if you take down these rocks to take a third base here, you have a much more faster and direct attack path across to your opponent's third base. And that could be crazy. Now obviously these rocks as well, I mean don't get me started on all the possibilities of what could happen in terms of siege and tanks up down here, pushes through this direction, etc. It's actually a very... I'm very excited about it in general. I, I don't know, just the fact we didn't see King Sejong in a while and King Sejong is such a great map. I don't know if I'm just feeling a bit of nostalgia on this one or whether it really could be great, but... I liked it yesterday. Again, if you didn't see Reno versus Puck, it was a really, really good series. And I highly advise you, uh, you check it out. So, uh, yeah. Especially this map of it, because it was really a great game. Again, yeah, I'm just going to be seeing this... Uh, these couple of SCVs. Just fighting against each other. A little bit of skirmishing here and there. Commands that are dropping down from Euphermal in his natural expansion. So the roles have reversed this time around. Now it's Euphermal to take the faster expand, while Sol will take the double gas and open up into a more aggressive setup, opening his options in terms of what he can get done here, in what sort of approach he can make in this game, and just how he's going to deal with this in general. The factory about to finish up and... The Cyclone will start on it almost immediately, so straight away into this Cyclone. Meanwhile, Reaper and the factory at home from Euphermal will obviously his own factory much later than uh, Sol's, but he will have that eco advantage. Sol is about to expand as well, though, so he is not going to be too far behind on the expansion, so we see a lot more of nowadays in TVT. The still, you know, the, the aggressive two gas opener, but still into an expand at some point, rather than building up into a starport. It's, uh, 
a decent way that this can go. By the way, this map has some ambient sounds and I can really hear it in like the right side of my headphones and I keep thinking like, what is that sound? It's just one of the ambient sounds on the map. It's really one of the things I don't like. <laughs> it's just a little bit irritating. When it happened yesterday, I was like tapping out. I was like, what on earth is that sound? Like, what's playing this weird buzzing sound every now and then? I was like, take my headphones off. Like, wait, I can't hear it. It was, uh, it was strange. Anyways, extraction here for the three reapers to come across. Uh, is there a way up over here? Yes, there's a Reaper ledge in the corner, so you can hop on up, but it's two Reapers from Reaper 2. Unfortunately, they're out of position for a moment. And these Reapers are going to go chasing each other around. Reaper pulls a couple of SCVs in to help out. Doesn't lose an SCV yet. One of them low, and he will lose just the one. For the two Reaper kills, though, with not losing his own Reapers, I'd say that's fairly successful, because now there's the Cyclone arrives. But as he gets his own Cyclone out, he'll be able to fight this pretty much immediately. SCVs need to get back up that ramp for the moment, though. Okay, well, again, the pressure continues, but now we see the Cyclone coming down. And, well, the Hellion is going to be trapped in the corner of the base. We'll just get one worker kill and back away as well. So pretty much just one worker here, one worker there. The approach of the game so far by Sol. As he goes to tanks and a medevac, so obviously a tank drop. Could be very powerful. He has a scan from Ethermal. is going to see the medevac as well, so he sees what comes out. Man, because a tank dropping over here is obviously very frustrating to play against. Ethermal, because of that, is already going to start making his way through those rocks. If he can open up these rocks, he really is not going to have anywhere near as much of an issue against Siege Tanks from this direction. So you've been already thinking ahead in the game, as Sol tries to play to the map. Obviously Sol only has the one Cyclone because he's been looking to do that as a fresh mule gets taken down, an SCV as well. Ephemal's Reaper's getting some revenge as Medivac reveals its drop, tank and all. Well, was it really looking to drop or was it just looking to save those units and get out of there? The Cyclone's no longer actually on the... Uh, on the rocks, he's actually going to leave them at about half health. Though I am a little bit afraid. I guess he's thinking maybe. Okay, he looks as though he's going to go back to it. For a moment, I was like, well, you know what? Why couldn't he just go across and have a counterattack if Sol's going to try and drop him? Because there's actually not going to be much here if Sol does load everything up and drop it down on you know this south side. But at the same time, obviously, that's a very risky maneuver. This Reaper just patrolling, trying to watch for anything coming out of the main base and flying across to this side of the map as well. Another factory moves on the way from the reactor and will drop down onto the tech lab. And we are going to be seeing new thermal going to show us some mech here on extraction. Now you can see the engineering bay on the way up as well here from Seoul. So he's getting that ready to go with a couple more barracks. He's going into the bio play. So we are going to have that classic matchup, mech versus bio. The clash of the two Terran styles going up against each other to try and prove which is better now in this series. This game was both kind of heading in towards bio. This game obviously very different. Cyclone's positioned over here and oh, tanks are starting to unload. Uh, I like this for you, Thermal. These two tanks are actually going to go down very quickly. This is five SCVs, but man, he kills two siege tanks. Those aren't cheap. One tank on siege is on over here now. Obviously very uh, in a very open position. Can reach... Does it reach the mineral line? That's kind of insane if it reaches the mineral line, I have to say. That's one thing that definitely doesn't make sense. Although Vikings should be able to push this away. Ah, you fill his own tank here. Going to get blown up before you can do much about it. Vikings will start to push their way through that medevac. You fill him with a couple more small mistakes. He has now pushed this away at least. A scan. I don't think it reaches the mineral line, right? It's just that it reaches the, um, the depot. It reaches like, it feels like it reaches these two SCVs. It doesn't though. Okay. Well, at least the last few Marines going to jump on in. The last couple of Vike, uh, Medivac, last Medivac needs to go down. Uh, scan maybe from Seoul, doesn't have it. Tank will survive from Ufemal. That would have been painful. This cost Ufemal quite a lot, but he has cleaned out the entire army in the end. He cost him a tank already, but again, I guess you got to remember that's triple Medivac that also went down for Ufemal, so that was pretty painful. Uh, sorry, for Seoul. So he lost a lot of his early game investment. Obviously, as Ufemal plays into Mech, that sets him up for a very powerful follow-up at that stage. The SCV is going down, new thermal. Losing a few workers as a liberator sieges in the main base. Two Vikings are, I guess, on their way back to deal with that. Looks like they are now, eventually. Interesting push we could see up this ramp here from new thermal if he wants to commit. He's got liberators too to pull. Well, I'd say Cyclones out of position, but actually not going to be able to get Cyclones. And even Marines here are going to be in some trouble. And now Ufilm is going to start returning the favor. This extra, uh, this refinery is going to be in a little bit of trouble. Liberators are stopping mining time, and well, how do you push down over here to deal with this? It's not going to be easy at all. Ufilm, 
Doesn't see that tank and reduce you. Okay, now he does go down. His uh, wasn't in range there. Cyclone comes forward. Actually starts to solo the siege tank. That siege tank is low. Finally being repaired. If you film sent the rest of his cyclones up, he actually might have had a pretty good time at that point. Stim is not done for a little while here, so these liveries are actually having a pretty great time. Another tank supporting. So actually these liveries are having a time of their lives. And these marines will not win out. Vikings here to control the area as well. New Fennel's counter-attack. The positioning on this map has been absolutely stunning. Both players showing us a great game here with the same sort of moves, the same positions, and just really, again, using this map beautifully. Another scan from New Fennel up into the natural expansion as we do see SCVs being picked away at once again. Another free work is going down. This time the Liberator will unseage him back away. Marine still taking a shot at damage. His impact is not far from finishing. But now there's four Vikings here. Two Medivacs will load up and go across the map. Or at least come in for a flank. Man, just the fact Sol can't mine from his natural for so long. Because of so few units as well. I mean, now another Liberator shows up. And Newfilm was already sending the rest of his army back in case of a drop. In case of more trouble. Which is good actually. Because that double drop that's coming in is actually sort of scary. Without anything else being here. A lot of you filmers army literally is just in the sky. Now Sol takes a third base down the low ground. Infernal has Cyclones nearby, so he'll come right on in here. He'll go straight after the Medivac to stop a lift up. He doesn't really seem to care about the siege tank. Looks as though he'll just get that after. He does lose 10 SCVs. But again, he cleans everything up once again. So it's another cleanup Sol now mining from the third base rather than just the natural. The natural just completely denied. Vikings are hunting for other air units to kind of pick away at here. It's as though he's going to just unsiege everything at the moment. Sets up the lives in a bit of a different position. We'll see that tank is actually going to be in some trouble. Vikings will just land to fight this instead, though. And that's the power of the Vikings. Not only will they push air units back, they will push back units on the ground, too. Hellions gathering together. Armories are here, so you can morph in the Hellbats and just push on forwards. And I kind of get the feeling that's what we might be seeing. Libre is going to siege up on the tanks, and... He will be able to kill one of these instantly. No instant on siege from the thermal. Doesn't even try to get the shop. Vikings pushing through the Medivac's in trouble again. Soul was slowed down so much in this game that we kind of saw this one coming. The thermal will take the second map, and that'll be 1 1 between the two of them. So they're going to tie out matches here again today. The thermal tying out all of his matches so far.